Today in the news, we discuss the second rollout of Alder Lake that is coming, its uh, leaked price and whether or not it would be worth it. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before we start, let me thank today's sponsor, Filmora. To download Filmora, just head over to the link in the description down below and choose the version of the OS that you want to download it for. Then just click free download. Filmora is a pretty fun and powerful video editing app with some pretty cool features and effects. Here's what I made with the full version of the software. Pretty cool, right? He's the double. There's also cool features like motion tracking and AR stickers. So go check it out, try the free version, and once again, thanks Filmora. So, Intel. That Alder Lake launch was kinda rough. I mean, sure, the performance is there, but power consumption and compatibility has been pretty rough. Handbrake is partially broken, so is Mozilla Compile, and a list of 52 games are incompatible with it, unless you disable the e-cores. And worst of all, only 11 of those have planned patches, and only on Windows 11. So what if we just removed the e-cores? Well, these smaller dyed CPUs should come fairly soon, and oh boy, do they look like they'll be the value kings. A little pricier than I expected, but still. Let's take a look at the newest leaks. A Canadian retailer, Represent, has listed a couple of unreleased CPUs for sale. Within this list is the 12100F, the 12400, 12400F, and the 12700F. The first three are likely using the smaller of the two die sizes for Alder Lake, given that they can have up to six cores and have no E cores. The 12100F is a quad core CPU, which should have eight threads, and it was listed for 148 Canadian pesos. Now, the conversion brings this to 118 freedom dollars, but usually we get slightly overcharged from the uh, currency conversion. So this could be 109 or even 99 dollars USD. For a quad core with this architecture, that's pretty awesome. I mean, we haven't seen a quad core in a while from AMD. Then let me skip to the 12 core counterpart, the 12700F. In Canadian rubles, this one stands at $455. Now, this one's a bit weird. It's a little less expensive than the 12700K when it comes to Canada by about $80, but IMO, it might not be worth the deal unless the frequencies are very close to a stock 12700K. Remember, the K series can overclock, the non-K can't. Apparently, according to Jay's Two Cents, it's pointless and dangerous, but don't worry, I guess I'll do my own testing to figure that out. Anyways, yeah, the 12700F is a little pricey in my personal opinion, but then we get to the real value options. First, the 12400. Now, this listing pretty much confirms it. It's a six core CPU, and it will likely have 12 threads. And as is, it is said to rival the 5600X. We'll look at performance in a second, but for the price, we're looking at a pretty hefty $287 Canadian. In USD, that looks like a good 230. Now, as is at $230 US, it's already a good 50 bucks under the current micro center pricing for a 5600X. But if you live in the US, you should know that they just obliterated the price of the 5800X to 299 at micro center, at least temporarily. So that might be more worthwhile if you live in the US but that's US only at a specific retailer. In Canada, or just on Newegg.com in general, no one has been matching the price of the 5800X from Micro Center. I mean, it is an insane price after all. So if you find it at 300 bucks and you've been looking for a new CPU, what are you waiting for? This is literally the best deal ever. If you're not in the US and your prices are quite stable, then the 12400 might be a good option given the $50 saved over the 5600X. But it gets better. We have a 12400F that's without the graphics. The 400F series has been notorious for being good deals. And in that case, it is still true, at least according to the leaks. The 12400F would be $249 Canadian, which equates to about 200 USD. Once again, that's with the Canadian tax, so something more akin to 179 USD or 189 USD. This one is definitely the deal you'll be looking for as a budget gamer 
if these criteria are met. One, that the pricing is similar to previous generations. The 1K unit price of the last couple 400 F series of processors is $157 USD. So I'd want something between that and $200 USD, which is technically what we see here on the Canadian retailer's website. Two, the overall performance needs to beat the 5600X. Now sure, the 5600X is a year old, but the price difference is quite big here. The 5600X would be 40% more expensive if the 12400F was 200 USD, even with the price cut at Micro Center. And three, the platform cost is fair. So far, the leaks say that it will meet the first two criteria. In single-threaded workloads, D12 400F gets 1721 points in Cinebench R23. That's a 12% lead over the 5600X. In multi-threaded performance, we're looking at 11,543 points. A very small lead over the 5600X, but still, it edges it out. Now, if you look at benchmarks for Alder Lake in general, the big cores are hauling ass when compared to the e cores. So it makes sense that uh, Intel decided not to include them in their lower end CPUs. I'm not saying that the 12400 or 400 F will win in every case against the 5600 X. You've seen reviews, Alder Lake has issues and it kind of trade blows with some AMD CPUs. But thanks to the lack of e-cores, some issues might simply just disappear. But we have to come back to that third criteria, platform costs. And well, Alder Lake won't be worth it for a while in the budget options, in my opinion. At least not for a 12600K CPU and below. If your goal is good to mid-high-end CPU and the best motherboard possible for I.O., sure, you have an option. But if you're value-oriented, the 12600K is not worth your money. At least not while A, the motherboard costs around two-thirds the price of the CPU, and two, certainly not worth it when there are no other options for motherboards. I mean, people are buying non-overclocking motherboards for overclockable CPUs simply because these overclockable CPUs have more performance in the bank compared to their non-K counterparts. So it's just saving money on the motherboards if you're not interested in overclocking. It's very simple. As for the 12400 400F, when it comes out, if there are no B660 boards on the market yet, then there's no point in releasing it. I mean, I couldn't bear buy a motherboard that costs as much, if not more than my CPU. So I would say, if your goal is not balls to the wall, let me spend all of that money on an Intel system, then wait for B660 and the non-K SKUs and take it from there. Who knows, maybe Intel would unlock the platform. Who am I kidding? And lastly, there's the release window. Right now, these locked CPUs are rumored to launch in 2022, and Ryzen 3D is also coming in 2022, early 2022 in fact. Let's just hope that AMD also goes for the jugular and beats Intel's pricing. That way, you know, we just drag these prices down and we get our budget systems back. In any case, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk, if you want to add to the conversation. As usual, you know that you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. I mean, I try, but I can't really. I mean, the love was saying.